There we go. All righty, thanks. You have a great day now. When you order the bench, this is the bench you'll get. I didn't get a special version or anything. The purpose of this video was for me to go through the process that you'll go through if you order one. So it was ordered, it was shipped. Here it is. I'm gonna unpack it. I'm gonna spread out all the pieces and parts. Then I'm going to assemble it. This video will be a companion video to go with the bench when you purchase it. So this will show you what to expect and how to put it together. Make sure you check around on your box for the stickers from the Smart Wood Shop. You don't want to miss out on those. Look at that beautiful top. All the 20 millimeter holes precisely placed, 96 millimeters apart with an extra row all the way around that's 32 millimeters in from the edge. All of the holes, the screw holes are pre-drilled. And then I've added to the CNC version, these tabs and slots so that it'll be a lot easier to assemble. After unpacking, the first thing I recommend is assembling the sawhorses. I have the luxury of having a Falk Smart Bench to do this on. Obviously you can do this down on the ground or if you have a different workbench or a piece of plywood with a couple of sawhorses to get it up to a comfortable height. Either way, you wanna take the, the head of each of the sawhorses and just put them together and have the holes facing up. Before I put the hinges on, I'll go ahead and run the router around both sides of it. It'll be a little quicker than trying to do it with the hinges on. I have a choice here. So I have a 45 degree chamfer bit set to just barely cut an angle. This one is going to be necessary for the top side of all of the holes. And that is so the bench dogs that we use to hold down a lot of the accessories like the router table and things like that have this flange and that will drop into the holes in that 45 and the longer or deeper the 45 the further it will drop down typically when i'm working with plywood i do a round over and i have you know one of each here and i could run it either way but what you can do is set up and just chamfer everything. So that's what I'm gonna do in this situation. I'm just gonna stick with one router, one router bit and chamfer everything. To make sure I have it just right, I'll grab a piece of the scrap that came packed with it. And I've got this dialed in, but I just wanna double check it because really you wanna get it just, it's just barely sticking out above the foot of your router. I do want to emphasize that rounding or beveling the edges on the sawhorses and actually all of the pieces, with the exception of the top, the top side of the 20 millimeter holes is optional. I wanted to add the uh, chamfering uh, to or rounding over to all the edges and especially to chamfering the holes on the top. But even with a CNC, that's a really big deal. When I put in the first screw all the way down and I seat it, I'll go slow and let it kind of seat the hinge and it'll kind of center it up. And then the same thing here. So it draws the horses together right where they need to be. For the sides and the spreaders, I'm going to do the roundover or the bevel 
on the inside and the outside of the openings. I won't be doing this outside edge where it assembles or here where it goes together. And the same with the top and the bottom. I'm not gonna pre-edge those. The insides don't need to be done at all. It'll just be the outside when it's all put together. Then I'll run the router around and do that. Both sides look really good. It's hard to decide where's the inside and the outside. This one has kind of an attractive grain to it. I think I'll put this to the outside. It does appear that the machine drilled holes uh, are slightly bigger on one side. So I would say that this would have been the top side uh, when the machine was cutting and drilling. So I'll stick with that. And this bench can last you a lifetime and the glue will be a big part of that. If you want to use clamps, you could start clamping things. I'm going to start without clamps and we'll see as I progress if I want to switch over to them. I am making sure that I use my finger to feel that it's flush to the outside. And I'm not countersinking for these. They have a very small trim head and they will sink right in. So you can overdrive them. I like to keep them pretty close to flush, just set in just a little bit. Where clamps would help you in this situation is this is a soft wood. So the screws will drive in deep and probably deeper than you want before it pulls the wood together. So it's a, it's a good idea to pull your joint together tight and then just sort of set the screw into it. The uh, tab is big enough that it squares it up. That was easy and very precise. I didn't have to really do anything, no squaring or anything. It was just automatic with, with the tab and the slots. There was uh, 16 screws, eight screws per side. There's, what, six pieces here? But four of them are identical and the other two are identical. So there's only two unique pieces. There's no top or bottom and there's no left or right, no inside or outside. I like that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's nice that I don't need to be measuring. I don't need any squares. Uh, I didn't need any clamps. You may find that you like to do clamps, but it's precision enough fit. I did have to tap it together a few times with the hammer just because it's a, was a few of them were, were pretty snug. But uh, I just squeezed them together with my hand and then put the screws in and carefully didn't over screw. There's real no fitting if you just, everything is held together. Now, as I'm screwing this together, there is gonna be a little flex on the, as we get to the middle of the sides because they're thinner and they can move a bit. So uh, I'll, I'll make sure that I flush those up with my fingers as I'm putting in the screws. Here it's a shorter stretch and it's got, it's tied together in the middle. So I don't, I don't feel any flex in those. And I'm going to go around and do my alignment, putting in just a few screws while the glue is, you know, before it tacks up. And then the rest will be just filling in the holes, just like we did on the bottom. And once I'm done with that, the bench is assembled. It does help a little bit to drive a screw in into these uh, tabs, into the slots, just straight in. There's not a hole there, but I'm finding I don't have to pre-drill. It's not splitting.
So that's it on assembly. I figure about an hour to put it together, glue and screw and clean up. When it's time to put your bench away or take it to the job site, Now you know how easy it is to put together. If you want to get a Polk Smart Bench for yourself, I'll put a link in the description down below. Click on it, it'll be shipped right to your door. Mahalo for hanging out with me in the Smart Wood Shop.